Ja, herzlich willkommen zu Unzensiert, die neue Gesprächsreihe beim Filmfest Hamburg, wo wir versuchen in halbstündigen Gesprächen das Spannungsfeld zwischen Kunst, Freiheit und staatlichem Eingriff so ein bisschen zu beleuchten und mit Regisseuren und Filmemachern generell aus der ganzen Welt darüber reden, wie es ist, Filme zu machen in Umständen, wo man einige Hindernisse überqueren muss, um eben Filme zu machen. Heute ähm, habe ich gleich zwei Gesprächsgäste und das, äh, ich freue mich sehr über die beiden. Wir haben gestern schon die Premiere ähm, des gemeinsamen Films Price of Love gefeiert. Und äh, jetzt sind die beiden hier, äh, Hermon Heilay und äh, Max Conlin. Max ist der Produzent und Hermon ist die ähm, Regisseurin. Und äh, kommen aus London und aus äh, Äthiopien. Um, thanks for being here, guys. And um, how did you enjoy the premiere yesterday? Yes, <laughs> we we was very enjoying it because uh, we didn't expect that kind of warm uh, audience, and uh, we was like uh, uh, you know happy about it, and uh, it was very good. Uh, receive it, they receive it very well, so we was happy. Um, Max, how does a guy who worked in the music industry and in TV in London get to make a film in Ethiopia? Good question. <laughs> um, there's two answers to this story. Um, the long version goes like this. <laughs> um, so I went to Ethiopia on holiday uh, uh, about a year or two before I moved to Ethiopia. I've been there nearly three years now. And I went back to London, I took loads of music with me, and I just listened to it non-stop for like three months. Um, and I, I felt that something was missing and I had to go back. And then I kind of eventually got over it. And a year or so later, I was writing a script in the Philippines, in the mountains. And it kind of reminded me a little bit of Ethiopia, and I suddenly had that moment. I thought, I have to set this film in Ethiopia. So I went back to London, I cleared everything I had, and two weeks later I moved to Ethiopia. I didn't know anyone, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I just had that kind of, you know, that, that, that mission. And uh, at the time I thought it was absolutely rational. And uh, I now look back and think, they're a little bit crazy. <laughs> and the short answer is I moved to Ethiopia from London because of the weather. Um, it's, it's like this, obviously. So, Hermon, uh, when this guy walked into that hotel and uh, proposed a movie, what were you thinking? Uh, I was in a production, and uh, but uh, uh, I, it was in the editing stage, so we was uh, a lot of filmmakers that we live in Addis Ababa, and uh, we were meeting, having a chat. And uh, Max, he came with a one hour friend, Italian guy. He was living around two years uh, the, in the hotel. The hotel is it's, uh, one of the, the, the oldest hotels, so it's kind of there are, you know, they, we hang out a lot there because it's very uh, interested place. So that, that, That's the hotel where all the artists hang out in? Yeah, Venezuela. yes, yes. And uh, so he came, uh, he, the Italian guy, he told us one uh, British guy, he want to make a movie here, so he want to meet, uh, uh, you know, uh, filmmakers. But before that, when he walked uh, uh, down, I saw him and, uh, he, <laughs> and <laughs> he came after that. <laughs> and actually, actually the, that was on my second day. And uh, I'd met this Italian guy who'd, who'd, who also uh, lived in Addis for two years. So he was a little crazy like me. And I said to him, he said, what are you doing back? I said, oh, I'm here to do a movie. I want to see if I can find some Ethiopian crew and if it's possible. He said, wait here. And then he came back two minutes later. He said, come with me. And he said, and we, he took me to a table where Hamon was sitting with a bunch of other guys. He said, Producer, production manager, sound man, director, actor, <laughs> boom, go make a movie. <laughs> and we did. 
it, uh, it sounds so easy when you tell that story, but um, mm -hmm. is, it, is it easy to make films in Ethiopia? It is, yeah. Um, we say that uh, we, we don't... We, all right, it's very easy. We don't have any equipment. <laughs> There's no money. There's no film schools. Uh, there's no roads, um, but it's really easy uh, because uh, seriously, it is because anything is possible. That's the, that's the beauty of Ethiopia. Like we don't have the formal side of education or resources, financing, all of that stuff, but people have the desire to to make films, and so anything is possible. Like for example. We filmed a scene in a church uh, for the film, and um, we, we drove past it one day, and I said, oh, look at that amazing church. It'd be great to film there. Obviously, we can't do that. And our production manager just said, hold on a minute. And he walked inside, and 10 minutes later, he said, yeah, we can shoot there tomorrow. Why it makes it easier, it's uh, the social, in Ethiopia, social life is an uh, important thing, you know? Uh, so you're going to have a lot of uh, families, you know, just you live uh, with everybody. Like, uh, you know, it's very good uh, relationship we have. You know, it's, it's not money or something is not important. You could live without money in Ethiopia. So when you do something, uh, when we just thinking about budgets, we are like located uh, every location. I can get uh, uh, you know just somebody's house, so uh, we're gonna ticket without paying, uh, and we're gonna say a car. So uh, yeah, my friend he have this kind of car. I can borrow from him, and he's gonna give me you know just maybe that 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 car is important for him. But people they are very uh, you know uh, cooperative. So that's why it's easy also. But there are, uh, there are a lot of issues that you, you never reach them uh, as a you know, filmmaker in Ethiopia. Uh, the first thing is convincing your family. You know, uh, film, uh, filmmaking, it, it doesn't sound for Ethiopian a serious, serious uh, job. <laughs> you know, people, they ask me, what did you do? Uh, uh, I work in a film. What? Is, is that a, you know, just, is there any fee you can make a money? You know, kind of question they just, it's not about money because people, especially the old artists, uh, even we can say like in theater, uh, musician, you can see them like always when they are old, uh, like lying to get a transport. So the fa family, they see, because if they see that, they don't want you to be like that. Why don't you choose another job, you know? Just there is no money in this. Why are you going to be a filmmaker? <laughs> but it's, uh, it's not only difficult to convince your family um, to make movies, but it's, uh, it's also difficult to convince the government to make the movie you yeah. want to make, right? Mm -hmm. is, uh, what, what, what's the situation like? Is the government in Ethiopia supportive of the film industry? In, uh yeah, yeah, it's a reflect of uh, society. Uh, government, they just, uh, they are... Uh, you know, collected from uh, the society. So it's the same thing because uh, we don't have any fund from government, but uh, we don't expect to also because the uh, film is extracting, as I told you, for <laughs> Ethiopian. So it's not yet there. Uh, but uh, what's the process? You have to have a license, of course, to shoot uh, a film. And after you finish, uh, you have to censor, there is a censorship, but uh, the censorship said uh, you, you can't, uh, you can't make a conflict between ethnic group and uh, a religion and, uh, you know, just th these two things, they, they just put it in uh, the law. But uh, there are like uh, other issues came uh, in front of you because uh, sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's again about the social life and the religion and the culture. You can't do a sex scenes or kissing or, you know, because the people also in the cinema, they don't feel like comfortable. So the, the, the censorship people, they ask you to cut it or they, they're going to advise you. Well, it's not, we are not going to let you to do this, please, cut it. 
But in your movie, there is a sex scene, right? Yeah, but it's not obvious <laughs> because we wasn't uh, also. Uh, we I was personally as a fi Ethiopian filmmaker. I need timing, you know. I, it, do, it doesn't make sense at this time if the people can't hear me because of this. If uh, they can't uh, receive the message, I, I don't want to do that. So, so, so you we, to yeah. you choose to let some things settle and yeah, hide it, like not so that Ethiopia yeah. can see them. Yeah. Yeah. Also, when, when things are subtle, at the, at the, at the moment, you know, the, the industry is in its infancy. Um, there was an industry before the communist regime, and then film shut down for a couple of decades, and the kind of new industry is only 10 years old. Um, and it's currently booming, it's really thriving. There's nearly 30 cinemas in just Addis Ababa, the capital city. Uh, each screen has four screenings per day. There's queues around the block, at like a midday on a Monday. You know, people love the cinema. And only one screen shows Hollywood movies. The rest are Ethiopian films. Um, so the audience have an appetite for film, but Film is seen as a straightforward form of entertainment. So it's kind of like television. Um, so the government don't support financially because they see it as a business. So filmmakers have an opportunity to tell a kind of TV style story, get it to cinema and make some money. So why should the government subsidize that? So. But there are a handful of filmmakers who are artists, who, who are making films because they want to make films. Um, and, you know, obviously Hamon is one of them. And that's the, that's the area where we need to address, to try and, you know, show that uh, film brings in tourism. You know, uh, it, it, it shows the image of the country. And, uh, you know, the, the government need to understand that and to support these, these artists because it's beneficial for everyone. But I think there's a long way to go to, to get near that. The, you, you had a conversation with, uh, with the censorship uh, authorities in Ethiopia, right, mm -hmm. about your movie. When they saw your raw cut, wh what, wh what did they say? Uh. <laughs> Actually, you can skip. I was convinced them because I had to discuss with them. Like, uh, it's not. I know as as you see it, it's not obvious a uh, sex scene. But without this, uh, the scene maybe for those who haven't seen the, the movie. In the scene, you see uh, two people entering a taxi, and then the taxi moves or sh shakes a little bit, and you can imagine that two people have sexual intercourse in that car. Yeah, and uh, so um, I explain for them, and they, they say, like, at least the duration, just cut it. Okay, I, I just say, like, I'm going to make it shorter. And But after that, as I told you, it's like they believe me. <laughs> they didn't uh, check it again. So <laughs> it's you, even you can <laughs> make it longer <laughs> after they give you their uh, permission. But what I want to add to um, Max about the industry, uh, uh, it's uh, a lot of films they be made, and uh, a lot of producers that uh, they want to the profit and they calculate and they come. Uh, that's the 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 big weakness of uh, the industry now, because it's kind of a market. Uh, if I make a movie in this amount of money. Uh, I'm gonna get this kind of profit, so just everything is make it with a small, small uh, amount of money. So just some some people they just think if I pay for the actor and it, it doesn't matter about the story, the money is not gonna be in at the the story or at the production or at the director, you know. Just it's very that's the bad thing now happening because it's kind of a comedy show everywhere people the audience also their mind it becomes like that's that they expect always that kind of uh, movies uh, drama comedy rom-com kind of stuff uh, or you know you have to make them laugh or cry that's it so that's that
the point. <laughs> your, your movie does both, right? Uh, we try, <laughs> we try, but it's not like uh, we we was like serious also about the issue. The issue is like very strong. They don't want to think. They don't want to focus. You know some. Because your your movie deals with amongst other things prostitution and religion a little bit on the side. Um, apart from the government authorities, is it easy to get such a film to a wide audience in Ethiopia in terms of the society, the perception of that issue? Well, I think th there's two issues. One, you know, the actual process of getting a movie out. Um, that's very simple. There's no distributors, so you distribute yourself, which uh, basically means uh, hiring a bunch of kids to take DVDs to the cinema halls so that no one pirates the DVD, and they literally supervise the screening every time. Um, so if you, if you have the resources to, to hire a group of 20 kids, you can get it in the cinemas pretty easily. Um, then the other issue is the, you know, how the audience perceive the film. Um, I'll say a little bit, and then you, you take over. But um, uh, a, a lot of people who go to the cinema go for social reasons not to watch films. So it's, it's, a, it's time to get out of the house and go, you know, sit in the cinema and, you know, people answer their phones and check their Facebook and whatever during a, a cinema, you know, during a screening and uh, they'll, they'll happily walk in and out, you know, all the time and, and so on. So, so that's a big issue. Um, and then also there's a kind of, group mentality where the group will decide whether they like it or not. Um, and, and there's a kind of consensus opinion. So if, if the kind of group leaders say, we don't like this, then the whole group say, we don't like this. Um, so it's, it's difficult because there's no kind of uh, niche markets. It's just, it's one straight market. Every cinema is the same. There's no like art cinema or commercial cinema or whatever. Um, so that's another challenge. Um. Yeah, uh, it's it's kind of like um, I always say the, for my friends, uh, there are enough people to change this market because there is a lot of uh, you know materials that they can lead even the African industry, not uh, for you know just Ethiopia or something, because. There are a lot of histories that we can tell, we can share for the, the world. So always, especially nowadays, it's time to change the industry or to d develop. That's why we are trying with Max also. He's, he's also trying to help the industry because uh, to, to take the you know, talented young uh, filmmakers for a training and uh, making together and uh, if, even when we work uh, if we can do the next project we 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 want to choose to work with the local markets uh, lo the local crew because uh, we can have some uh, crew and uh, with the local if we can mix it uh, the, the the knowledge can be transferred and uh, we need to have like uh, uh, the industry needs uh, like law or uh, what do you call it uh, uh, yeah, regulations. Uh, and if uh, we are talking a lot with my friends, actually, uh, nowadays, we need to work together. We need to change uh, stuff, you know, uh, so we can lead African markets uh, if we can work and we can give it some shape. And is that, do you also mean that in terms of uh, change the market and change the industry in terms of what you can talk about or shoot movies about? So the issues you can and cannot touch is that is that a big issue? You yeah, we can touch any issue actually. It's a, it's not a, a specific thing. It's a risk because, as uh, I mentioned, it you work with a, a kind of uh, the producers. They are not professional. They they just heard there is uh, money. If you make mo uh, if you make film, you can make money. You know, so they just focus in the, the in the profit. So if you can get a professional producers, uh, you can do whatever you want. Otherwise, you can work with your friends. Sometimes we do this. We we share stuff. So some some guy, if he have uh, uh, equipment, 
or I, I can write and direct, uh, and uh, there are a couple of actors, and uh, we don't care about the money because we love filmmaking. So we do it that way, and uh, th we can take the risk. But it's always you can't do the same thing, you know. Especially in when you come in some age, you, you say like a lot of questions. Uh, even you know, film uh, naturally needs money, and it's like you can't do this amount of. The limitation is it becomes tiring. So. So if I understand you correctly, it's you you shoot movies about certain topics, because, for example, like rom coms, because you know they are going to make money, yeah. rather than shooting movies about the issues you would really care about. Is that is that the problem? Does that describe? Yeah, the yeah. Quality? And and one of the problem is that uh, a lot of filmmakers are not filmmakers. They don't. They're not interested in making films. They want to make money. They, you know, they're, maybe they're a butcher or, you know, a car mechanic, and they hear you can make money, so they 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 put their money in and they make a movie and they think they can get rich quick. So they make a movie in six weeks, you know, from script to to delivery. Um, so that that's that's a big problem. Anyways, they're not gonna be rich, yeah, because it's the, the, there there is no money that can can make you rich. You know, you can get some uh, hundreds. Um, thousand blur, but uh, it's not. Uh, you can't be rich. But what's the thing? It's tempting, yeah. Filmmaking sometimes it's a kind of. Uh, I don't think it's only the the money. The being a producer, even the world, like uh, making a film and being around the media, you know, that's also attractive. Uh, but uh, there are a couple of uh, strong filmmakers. Always, I'm try. I'm just always trying, like, to tell them, like, let's let's do it, like, you know, together. It's uh, it's very uh, there is a talent, so they address the issues. Um, I I talked to Sean McAllister a couple of days ago on on this stage, and he said um, the role for for the artist, he called himself an artist, the role for the filmmaker or artist has always been to provoke debate and to raise issues for discussion, and most importantly to precipitate change, is that something you would uh, take on for yourself? Yes, yes, of course. Because uh, uh, I always think this, uh, I, as I told you before, f exactly 15 years, uh, the first color uh, film is made in Ethiopia. As the industry is it's one of the first uh, uh, in Ethiopia, so for Africa, not for the other world. And after that, because of the uh, civil war or stuff in Ethiopia happened, it was stopped. So I, I, I am almost, uh, I spent 10 years in this uh, industry. So it's my generation started again. So I want to be part of it. I don't want to be, sometimes I always say to, to, we discuss about it with Max also. I want a part of the Ethiopian filmmakers, you know. I want change. I want to face, because always I face the problems. And I want to solve it together with them. And I also, I think, um, you know, there's not been many uh, Ethiopian films internationally. So most people around the world have not seen what Ethiopia is actually like. There's still a stereotype hanging, uh, you know, in the Western world. Um, and so part of what we want to do is, is tell contemporary stories to, sh to say what you know of Ethiopia is wrong. It is not like that. It is a booming, developing, you know, wonderfully magic place full of soul. Um, and it is 100% positive. There is no negativity whatsoever in the country. Um, so it's also very surprising for people to see, you know, contemporary Ethiopian films. And there's, a, there's you know, there's been, I think, three, of, three or four over the last couple of years that have, that have been on the international festival circuit that are doing all right. So. We want to, you know, work together and be part of that to, 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 you know, show the world what actually Ethiopia is really like. And with uh, those encouraging words, uh, thank you very much, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.